or good evening to you. Happy 6 p.m. Thank you very much. We are here. Pepper is taking her own little aperitivo nap. I don't know I'm glad she made it in to join us. That's awesome. Oh, of course. So um, I want to give everyone a minute to show up. Um, but for those of you who are already on, hello. You're we are joining on your double J outfit. I'm loving it. I love it. So for those of you watching, I am wearing the mini swing dress. Um, the color I believe is Itica Rosso. Oh, and I'm I think so it is the totem print. Am I right? Actually, the print is Itica. Okay. And it's a vintage print that we, that I found in, it's part of my archive. And we, we kind of tweaked it a little bit. It actually comes from, the original dress came from a, a very chic Milanese woman's grandmother, Italian okay. grandmother. I, I love know. it. I get tons of compliments on it. And um, for those of you coming on, welcome. Um, if you are going to be watching our How to Accessorize today, I want you to know that in our bio, if you click on the link in bio which says Beekman Cross La Double J, you can directly go to JJ Selects as she's talking about them. And if you click on the clothing, you can go straight to the site to purchase. And if you click on the pieces, you can borrow the coordinating pieces and you can have your whole new look. So. Um, let, we should just probably kick it off anyway. I, I'm so impressed with how like technologically advanced we are. That sounds like pretty uh, cool in terms of possibilities for people. Right? Isn't it crazy? I mean, I feel like if there's any sort of benefit to COVID, it's that we've connected ourselves in such different ways. So welcome everybody. This is the fabulous JJ Martin of La Double J. And um, we have a real treat today. So hi, Jen Palace. So many of us um, have, many of you have written in to us and called our styling team for help with how to accessorize with jewelry. And lots and lots of questions have come in. So I thought no better chance than to call on an incredible resource. So I know my sort of go-to, if you've watched any of the Beekman Fine Jewelry Conversations, is start with the person who would make your list of who would you invite to a dinner party, living or dead. And JJ is an unbelievable resource. So she has been a accessories editor, journalist. She's a lifelong jewelry collector. I'm gonna let her tell you how she transitions into founding and being the creative director of an incredible clothing brand and lifestyle brand, really, La Double J. Today, I am also wearing La Double J. Yeah. And again, if you've just joined us, anything you see today that we're pairing and talking about, if you click on the link in the Beekman bio, Beekman Cross La Double J, you can order the clothing directly by clicking on each item. You can also borrow the pieces directly by clicking on them and have your whole new look. So JJ is, you know, the go-to for, you know, how to edit, how to think about how to accessorize. So my plan today is we'll start a little bit with how you get to Love Double J, then we're going to go through your pairings. Again, everyone watching, you can click right through on our site on the link in bio. And then um, we've got about 20 minutes at the end for questions. Please throw your questions in the question mark box as well. Um, we have tons of questions for JJ and they're really good and I'm excited to learn from your answer. Hi. Here as well. Oh, we it's so to... good to see you in person. We've been best. chatting. That's awesome. He can help with questions too. All right. So JJ, I think the best way to introduce your background is to ask you, how did you get into journalism and editing? What brought you in from California? Where did you go to school? How did this happen? So the universe brought me into all of this because I had no plans for any of this. I always dreamed about fashion and jewelry from when I was a child, but I grew up in a very sporty kind of masculine family and nobody was flying to Paris for the holidays or going to the Met Museum on the weekends. So we were um, not a very cultural family and I just kind of always had these dreams and like you I went to Berkeley and when I was go there <laughs> go Bears and when I was there I thought I wanted to be a lawyer can you believe huh. it so I was a rhetoric major and luckily I was a rhetoric major because that taught me 
it's sort of the art of argument and conversation right. and communication. So I learned those skills and slowly I realized that I did want to be in a creative field. I didn't think I was creative. I almost like didn't feel like I was worthy of that. And so, but I just wanted to be near creative people. So my first job was at an ad agency in San Francisco. It was a really cool, small one called Hal Reiny. And they were just doing great work. And I was on the account side. And then I moved to New York to work at another cool one called Kershaw and Bond and Partners. And out of the blue, we got the Tommy Hilfiger account. And this cool. was like a big deal for me. I mean, yeah. now I'm laughing about it because like, it's not like Tommy Hilfiger is the coolest designer in the world. It's not like Chanel, but I was really excited. But and directional, impactful. Yeah. So I got fashion experience and from there I landed the job at Calvin Klein. So I was working in the marketing department at Calvin. And as I said, like the universe brought me to Italy. I met a man in New York who was living in Italy and we had this long distance relationship. And I ended up just like giving up my job and, and moving to Italy with actually no job uh, wow. because the Italians had never heard of the word marketing. So Anna, who's on this call, who's now my marketing director, who we love, thank God the Italians like woke up and realized how important marketing is. But back in 2001, nobody <laughs> knew what it was. And so I couldn't get a job at a fashion company. Mm -hmm. And it ended up that I was, you know, sort of moping around at a fashion show one time, sort of like, you know, after an after party kind of situation. And I randomly met a journalist who was in charge of like the world's first online fashion news service, which was called Fashion Wire Daily. And oh. he hired me as a Stringer reporter because he couldn't find anyone who wrote in English in Milan. And I was like, I can write, I'll do something for you. <laughs> so I just like jumped in and this was such a cool job because I, I did everything from like Prada's you know, quarterly earnings reports to wow. Tom Ford's Gucci store opening in Monte Napoleone to interviewing Victoria Beckham front row at the Dolce Gabbana show, like my, and, and then writing reviews on the Dolce Gabbana show. So like that job taught me everything about journalism. I was on the lowest of the totem pole um, because the Italians, in addition to not having marketing, they didn't have online websites for the brands at that time either. So they were like, we don't really care about your online news service. <laughs> but it was amazing because Susie Menkes, who's this very historic, uh, fabulous journalist, was reading what I was writing. She was thought it was really cool. And literally after a year of schlepping at this job, I started working for the International Herald Tribune. So that's going from like bottom of the barrel that's to awesome. creme de la creme very quickly. So again, the universe. And um, and from there, I, I started a 15 year journalism career. I worked um, on staff at Harper's Bazaar in the US. I worked on staff at the Wall Street Journal magazine and wallpaper magazine. So I got wow. a very broad education in Italian fashion, in Italian design, in lifestyle, in all of this kind of stuff. And yeah, I mean, I really feel like the Italians taught me everything that I know today about style, about getting dressed, about what works together. And then I bring kind of like my American personality, personality. to the next. I like it. So given that you were already at the apex of an editing and journalism career, what prompted you to start your own brand? So it was a very spontaneous, um, not really planned. I wasn't like, I'm going to be like net a -forte. It was more like, this is something I really feel within me. I think it could be a great project, but I'm not really sure. And I'm not really ready to leave journalism. So for the first two years that I had double J, I also still worked as a journalist oh, wow. and the way, the way it, and I, and I worked every Saturday and every Sunday and every night. And it was a lot, um, but it was worth it. And the way that I launched was, um, you know, it was, it's my ex-husband who told me, he's like, you really should do something with all your vintage. And he suggested vintage jewelry. So 
my my ex husband has a e commerce company, and they put brands online, and so I had that support system, and I brought the idea of telling stories about Italian women, about these incredible creatives who are just miraculous homemakers, entertainers, decorators, as well as being great at their day job. And so I, I started this online magazine about them and they were all wearing my vintage collection of both jewelry and clothing. So before we started making new clothes, like this is new, your dress is new, but we're both uh, these are both used um, using vintage prints. Mm -hmm. At the beginning, I was wearing, I was, I was selling real vintage clothing and real vintage um, jewelry. Right. And the whole thing started with a brilliant vintage collection of jewelry that I had found in Milan that was kind of being cultivated by this amazing Italian woman who is the foremost authority on Italian costume jewelry wow. and she had bought the entire atelier of Ugo Coriani when he died in the 90s of AIDS so Ugo Coriani was this like secret weapon who was designing jewelry for Karl Lagerfeld at Chloe Karl Lagerfeld at Chanel Valentino Johnny Versace Christian Lacroix he was doing all of the costume jewelry in the no late idea. 80s and 90s yeah so oh. I got this, I got my hands on this huge collection. Oh. And then I said to her, okay, I want to sell that. But then can I also cherry pick and curate some of the jewels in your historic collection? And she wanted to unload some stuff. So I started editing and, and through Deanna, I ended up learning so much about jewelry because I was literally like with her every day. She's like this big. She's so tiny. She has the hugest personality this booming voice she's italian but speaks english better than i do Amazing. she is so smart she knows everything about jewelry and and she knows how to spot fakes she knows that you know today's chanel jewelry is not worth any money whatsoever you shouldn't buy it because most of it's made in china blah 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 blah, blah. like she knows all the inside stuff it's it's hilarious and she is an authenticator so basically before brands started using um, logos, because yeah. logos is a thing, it's a recent thing of like yeah. generally the 70s they started doing that. Yeah. Um, she can authenticate Chanel from the 1920s because yeah. she has the eye for it. Because each, you know, Goosens, whatever it is, like each jewelry house was using a certain jewelry manufacturer and each of them was known for a kind of workmanship and she be, you know, so I just learned so much from her and we did really well. I mean, we sold almost her entire collection and then vintage became really challenging from an e-commerce standpoint because, you know, it took me like 20 years to amass my collections sure. and it's hard to kind of refill yeah. that stock. No, it absolutely is. Yeah. And so that's when I got the idea to do new clothes with vintage prints and we started with one dress the long version of the yeah. dress you're wearing right now swing dress and link the in bio swing dress. <laughs> yeah, the swing over there. yeah and now we've got the new we've got a, a i'll show you the this is the swing dress luca's holding it there it is oh lovely yeah it's just the easy peasy yep. super simple t-shirt dress and maybe when we transition into our conversation, let's start with that swing dress. I'm going to put up your jewelry pairing and I'm going to hold it up because I have it here. Um, you're so organized. I love that. Well, we had to prep for you. If you're going to face off with an editor, you got to be ready. <laughs> so, JJ, after um, all of your experience with editing, did it change the way that you collect jewelry over time? Like from the start of your collection to now? Have you changed anything about the way that you look for jewelry or, or add to your collection? I mean, you're going to laugh so hard, but I am so overly um, stimulated now with jewels and sparkle and print that I kind of like don't want to wear, like, you know, like my ear, I don't have any, I've got my, my magic black opal. I love but, that. Like, 
I don't really wear too much jewelry anymore just because like there's, you know, I've been vibrating. However, I will show you something really exciting in my oh. house, which you will like. You will definitely like, I hope the video keeps going uh, because my house does that. Luke has been amazing with the Wi-Fi, but it's not totally amazing. So what I did with my jewelry collection is... Oh, look at your pretty doll. wall. That's amazing. Oh, I love that display. That's fabulous. And I agree with you, Gabriella. Her ring is a statement. Oh, JJ, so, this is stunning. So I love, I love these pieces. And I want them near me. But sometimes I don't always want to wear them. You know, right. so, so I like to treat jewelry as like artwork. Why not? Mm -hmm. Absolutely like artwork. And also, if you're feeling overwhelmed, borrow it from us. You don't have totally. to make a commitment. Because that way you don't have to have, like, I think that's a lot of what people feel like they want totally. to wear that important piece just once or they don't need it all the time. So I yeah. totally understand that. I, my taste changed because I started really understanding what important jewelry is really about. And it's not necessarily about buying from Cartier. Mm -hmm. You know, for me, I, I love costume pieces because there's so much creativity and, mm -hmm. and I love big, bold jewels, as you could see from the necklace wall. <laughs> and by the way, you've got a million comments of people who are who are wanting to copy that idea. Everybody's stimulated by the necklace. Oh, good. Ball. So, oh, JJ, good. let's turn into our main focus today, which is how to accessorize. If you've sure. just come on uh, to remind you, everything that JJ is curating today is available through the link in our bio. If you link um, onto Beekman Crossla Double J, you can shop directly to the website for each piece of clothing. Just click on it. You can borrow the jewels by clicking on them and you have your new outfit. So um, you have lots and lots of questions that we're going to get to. But to kind of start with our main topic, when you are kind of thinking about a jewelry collection to go with your wardrobe, and today I want to remind people this is the newest collection from Let Double J, so this is an exciting view. Yay. Um, and she, we're going to talk about this later, but she also sources directly with some of the oldest houses in Italy, has been a big supporter of craftsmanship as we are at Beekman, New York, and really want to give a shout out because you are direct to consumer, you're not getting that markup that you would see otherwise. So you are getting we the are, best quality. We are 100% made in Italy in like the country's best factories so yeah. we i mean our silks are being printed next to vuitton dior gucci so i mean it's like it's unbelievable and our prices are so much lower so you're getting a good deal all right so let's start with um when you approach accessorizing with jewelry are there any do's and don'ts how do you start looking so today when when you started the the guest curation for us at beekman how did you start? Okay, so I am attracted, as you probably realize, to bold jewelry. And all a lot of this has to do with the fact that I'm tall and I'm a big person. And so I understand that if you're really petite, it's hard for you to have like a door knocker necklace on. And I totally understand that. But at the same time, I also really love bold jewelry because just like the wall, I, I don't know, I feel like it's a conversation piece. It's totally. a way in. I like color. I love flowers, nature, animals. And I love jewelry that like makes me laugh. Like anytime there's an owl, it's in. Yeah. A snake, I love it. You know, you know, all this kind of stuff. And there's certain stones that I'm really affected by like i am crazy about opals yeah like look how cute the there he is owl. this is a boucheron owl and one of jj's picks that you're going to see in a minute and you can ask anything you want about how to pair this and how she got there yeah and, and you know what's fun about an owl like i guarantee you someone's going to ask you about the owl totally and then you can start to start talking spirit animals and like the owl is one of the best it's just great yeah. you know so it's just a way in and and these are ju i like jewelry that is 
fun and approachable and mm-hmm. not like, oh, look how rich I am. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's not really what we want to do. It's like, you want to shine bright. You want to kind of, it's like a, it's a way to like get your light going. Absolutely. So why don't we kick it off? Do you want to put up your first piece and we can talk about it? Sure. Okay. So, um, Luca, maybe you want to hold this. Maybe Luca should hold me. Oh, uh, wait, I put it on uh, reverse. It's oh, no. Yeah, you, can go, you, can, you can hold it towards you. Yeah, sure. Okay. So. Awesome. Love this, it. The Persephone this, dress. You can find this, it on our site. Exactly. Our Persephone dress. And this is so, okay, so I named this after the Greek goddess Persephone, who is the queen of the underworld. Um, I highly recommend you all read this book, Goddesses and Every Woman, that, that influenced all these collections we do. Anyway, this is like the ultimate summer or even fall winter party dress. You could wear this to a wedding, you could wear this to a gala, you could wear this to a museum opening, you could wear this to a garden party. You're probably not gonna wear this to like Sunday breakfast. Um, And it's in a beautiful silk satin. And I chose to pair this, you know, look, in terms of the pairings, a lot of this is just instinct. You know, like where do you go? What does your heart get excited about? I tend to, if you're going to do colors, etc., it's kind of nice to sort of have a connection in color. And these, I thought, paired really well with those drop earrings that you have that have, like, what is it, a smoked glass and crystal? Maybe you can explain. So, JJ, if you come closer to the camera, I'll hold up the earrings with it. And for those of you watching, this is actually a sliced diamond. It's laser sliced. And it's a repurposed industrial diamond. So this is a sustainable repurposing of an existing diamond. So actually, JJ, what you picked is a super cool take on being sustainable, which we love. Yeah. Naturally. And and you did, I should say, JJ has done all of this naturally without knowing which one she was picking. I didn't know any information. I didn't have designers. I didn't have, I didn't have anything. I just went on feeling. And I will say today that you have chosen a range that goes from a brand new designer to some of the oldest houses to anonymous. You've got some really cool picks. So let's switch to your next one. So this is another. Oh, I love that one. Fabulous party dress. You know, you could also wear this by the beach if you wanted to. It's in our silk twill. It's strapless, but it comes with like little baby spaghetti straps if that's not your gig. Um, You could also wear it on one shoulder, you know, like down like this, the way I'm wearing this one. You could tuck in the other shoulder under your armpit. This one I thought just looked so great with those tear, those um, like waterfall teardrops in the, the turquoise, clear, pink, and yellow. Because the colors are so similar. Mm-hmm. Love. JJ, did you think about anything else instead of these earrings for that dress? Did you have it in mind that you wanted those colors? No. I honestly, I picked the jewelry first, and then I said, okay, what of what we have looks good with this stuff? You know what I mean? Oh, that's very cool. Yeah. I, I think that, and honestly, I think that's the way people should go like they should either be in like in love first with the dress or the earring and then decide what works afterwards do you know what i mean like you should decide you want to wear the earrings and then say okay what dress do i what dress do i have that looks great with this but you know those earrings could be great with a black dress or white dress or even a chambray shirt with your jeans and you're just like rocking it you know what i mean and like totally sandals or something And so these, just so you know, are from the 1960s and they are an anonymous designer. So you went there. Really cool. I love love 1960s. Richa, give me a thumbs up if you can see this okay now. We good, Richa? She's got a little bit of a time delay, but I'm assuming we're good. Okay, cool. Let's see the next one. So ideally I wanted you to, and this is one of my favorite prints of the season. It's totally. Cool. It's, it's one of the new prints that we um, designed and this is a placed print. So this is our all over print. This is 
placed and this also comes in a caftan which i really wanted to show you tonight but it's like out on a photo shoot so yep. we have this outfit for you which are which are so fun like because these pieces you could just wear this to the beach with a tank top yeah or wear it together wear high heels and then put on that amazing bracelet that you have oh that's cool um for this one jj if you had a question of how to layer so given that you have chosen a David Webb turquoise woven bracelet, what comes to mind for you? What would you be looking for if you wanted to add, say, rings or a necklace or earrings? Do you know what I would do? Rather than put rings, necklace, earrings, do your whole, do more bracelets. Okay. I love that. I think that's cheaper and more modern. So, so this I is the Webb bracelet. I would look for more gold bracelets together okay. and, and keep a whole gold story and maybe you have different stones, maybe you have just plain gold. See what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. And for those of you watching, for this David Webb bracelet, if you want to follow JJ's direction and do an arm of bracelets, we do have the plain gold woven David Webb version as well. So you could even stay in a woven theme if you wanted to. How do you feel, JJ, about mixing textures? So here you have a quite distinctive woven gold texture. Would you mix it up, go smooth, yeah. go braided? Yeah, cool. for sure. For sure. Just like you would in your home with like furniture. Like I mix a lot of antique furniture and it's great to have chrome with brass. Yeah. I you love know. that too. Yeah. And, and you know, of course you could put the bracelet plus the ring, but I wouldn't do bracelet, ring, earrings. I mean, that's very 1950s, like these sweets. Like you want to be more modern with the jewelry. Yeah. And we do get a lot of questions to our stylists about how to layer and keep it modern. So the matchy matchy is clear, but what if you want to be a lot more young and fun with it? How do you get there? So the way that I would get there is like, so for example, the next thing I'll show you is our, is our um, big dress. Yeah. It's big. This is so fun for the summer. I adore this. Like this is just such a Hamptons dress. Amazing. Or even like an LA backyard. And always wear these dresses with flats, please. You know what I mean? Like you, it's so easy. If you want to be dressed, you wear it with like a, a fancy flat or whatever. But you could even wear this just with like, super simple Capri sandals. Mm -hmm. Now, one way to like make your layering, you know, younger is like, I love the ring that we put with this. Yeah. Why don't you wear more than one big ring on the same hand? So it's like even, you know, doing something like this mm -hmm. is so cool. Very cool. You see what I mean? Like that just feels more modern. How do you feel about, um, this is by the way, a David Webb cabochon ruby and um, emerald and sapphire ring that you chose. Um, it's probably the late 60s, beginning of the 70s. It's so chic. It's so chic. How do you feel about it as a pointer versus a middle versus a ring when you're layering? I would definitely do a pointer yeah. on that one. Yeah. That feels like more rock and roll. Very cool. But, um, and then with that, you know, if you really want to dress it up, you could do an earring too, but I wouldn't do like earring, necklace, ring, you know? And given that you have the bare shoulders, would you go for big earrings, nothing on neck? Do you have sort of a rule on yeah, that? Yeah, I would do one, I would either do earring or necklace. With mm -hmm. the strapless dress, it's amazing, either or. Yeah. Now, if you're gonna do earrings, make sure you pull your hair back. Okay. See them. Yep. Give it the the full canvas. Yeah, you want like you, you want your yeah, yeah. Love. Okay, we're ready for the next. Okay, so this is your dress. You're wearing the mini swing. Yeah. You're wearing it in cotton. Here we have it in silk. Just like the one you're wearing. This is like the go-to easy peasy summer dress. Mm-hmm. And we just thought that this looked really I mean, this goes with so many different things, but like Again, I'm a big fan of big rings, as you mm -hmm. can tell. And this one, super, super chic. What stone is this? Um, this is a really lovely quartz. So it has fantastic healing powers. This it is a bulgari quartz ring. 
And JJ, that brings me actually to a question that was sent in, which is how do you approach jewelry for bold prints? So since we have this wonderful bold print, maybe you could tell us a little bit about why you picked this ring. Yeah, I mean, look, you could do a ring that had a lot of colors, but like mm -hmm. sometimes it's nice if you're wearing a lot of print already, then you pick maybe one tone of your print, like this quartz has a little bit of a rose quality to it. And it, or maybe it's clear in the photo, it looks rosy. Mm -hmm. um, it, it does have a rose undertone. It does. And that just looks great with the rose and the, in the dress, I think. Perfect. Are there any don'ts for a bold print? Anything you would avoid? Um, You know, you know what's hard about this? I feel like there's no steadfast rule. It's like, you know it when you see it. Yeah. It's not something where it's like, you can't do this because sometimes it really works visually. Mm -hmm. I encourage everyone, practice, try, look at women you find really, mm -hmm. you know, chic, see what they're doing. There is a lot of layering on necklaces right now that I see of thinner necklaces. So if you like more delicate necklaces, maybe you layer two or three together mm -hmm. and that can be great. I, I find it's kind of hard to put jewelry on top of the pattern. Mm -hmm. You know, that's why sometimes if you're going to do a big necklace, maybe you should have a, a like a more of an open neck, which brings us to the next one. Again, right. give it some canvas. Yeah, or this actually isn't a print, but you oh, want you want to see that pendant because it's so beautiful. And here, of course, we could have done a different pendant. It could have been red and yellow and blue or something like that. But sometimes it's just nice, nice to make a statement in like an all blue color palette. Yeah. So JJ, you were just asked, what about wearing bead necklaces in a single color, like mandarin garnet or emerald bead necklaces? Would you do that with a bold print? Yeah, sure, why not? So and you chose one of my absolute favorite pieces in the collection to go with that dress that you have. This is Van Cleef and Arpels. This is um, early 1970s. This is turquoise and lapis. If you go on the site and click the link in bio, you can see that it has incredible gold flecks in the lapis, this wonderful gold detailing. And this is a good one, I would guess, for a tall girl, because this is a very cool, long kind of Jackie Onassis pendant of the 70s. That's when, so and remember, when you get a pendant that's really long, I like to shorten them sometimes, you know, by hooking another part of the chain, if that's possible. Great point. You can play, you can play with that. But it's great to have a long one. Obviously, really cool. with a pendant like this, if it's on top of the blue, you know, it's harder to wear that kind of pendant. You lose the graphicness if it's mm -hmm. on top of a print. That's why you would want to wear that pendant either on the skin Mm -hmm. or on a solid color so it pops how do you feel about it on a salad uh, on a solid turtleneck like sort of full-on jackie kennedy yeah gee love love right. that um so next one we are all set for you okay so this is our cat our turkey cactus print which i find hilarious i love it it's I a riot it. isn't that great so you could do this with like tennis shoes flip-flops you can do this with like your chic loewe wedge sandals yep. and in fact this is the kind of outfit because it's in silk with jewelry you can really dress things up so you're either wearing this with flip-flops and you're good for the beach or you're wearing that like a more important shoe you're doing a little bit of color on your lip mm -hmm. And you either have like a huge ring, like the one I picked that was an oval, or you could do really bold earrings with this. Mm -hmm. And that's how you like elevate it. Or you could do an amazing full gold and you know stone necklace. Yeah. But I can just choose maybe just one. Just do one. 
What yeah. I love about this for everyone listening, this is a casual look that you make fun with jewelry. And yeah. I think we want to really get away from the idea that jewelry is only for big events and once in a while. So the ring you chose is Stephen Webster, who is one of the only living designers we carry because he is committed to sustainable sourcing throughout his chain. And this is a magnificent opalescent ring. It's called the Bang Ring. Um, this one actually is in a photo shoot today, so it was not available for me. But if you go on the site and again, click the link in bio, you can borrow this ring to go with the outfit that you can click through. That is just a, such a statement ring. You're going to get great energy. Oh, it's killer. You know, you were talking about the quartz being yeah. a, a, a clearer. It absolutely is. And the opals are super strong energetically as well. Absolutely. So that's Absolutely. And, and if you ever have any of your stones um, on a full moon, make sure you put them out of the moonlight because they get, uh, they get taken the energy, full moon energy. Great point. And actually, um, Sheikha Intisar Al Saba, who was on our IG live last week, pointed out that you also want to give it a shot, borrow it to see how it feels on you. So yeah. for your zodiac, for where your head is at at this moment, you know, you can borrow it and see, do I feel good? Do I feel better? Do I feel stronger? And see if it picks you and you pick it for where you're at. So I think, you know, you, you picked a very powerful ring. And I know Stephen Webster puts a lot of thought into those stones. So that is great. We are I ready for the next one. Okay, so here we are with our famous owl. And oh, yeah. You know, this is kind of a busy print. So I, the only reason I would, if the owl would have been a lot more colorful, I probably wouldn't have put it with this. Yeah. But to, to, the, point, to the person who asked about the colored beads. Yes. If you had colored beads, the color of this Pierre Cardin vase. Oh yeah, great that point. Great on a black and white. Like a black and white canvas is great for you to play with color, but not multicolor. I would just pick one color. Very you know? cool. And if you go to our site, if you you can search in the drop down by stone, and you can either select orange, red, or carnelian, and you can find some cool pieces that fit JJ's description. So I'm going to take the image down and hold up the owl. So the owl that you picked is um, by the house of Boucheron and he is amethyst, diamond, and um, sapphire so cool. and just a total winner as you said. Oh, He's got a lot to say. Um, and JJ, you had a lot of questions that were sent in about Animalia jewelry. So I'd love to just jump in and ask you some of those. So when you're using a key piece of animal jewelry, how do you layer in other pieces? Do you leave it alone? Do you add more animals? Do you add something that builds on it? How do you work? No, don't mix your animals. Okay. If you're going to pick one animal, like that's it. You're on your owl train. That's it. You're not going to also wear a snake bracelet or anything like that. Okay. Okay. So you commit to one animal. That's kind of probably all you need is one piece. I wouldn't okay. go with the vignette. What's it called when you have the whole set? The suite. The suite. The vignette. You know what I mean. Um, I just because those jewels are very big and bold, unless they're mm -hmm. small. You know what I mean? This one isn't, small. but generally, yeah. In general, I'm just speaking in general. Um. I kind of love everything. I mean, I have bee necklaces that are gold and turquoise enamel with like crystals in them. They're so beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, I have, I don't have a bat, but I really like the idea of a bat. I really am into deers, but I don't know if that would make a good um, animal. We see, you do see a lot of bees. Yeah. Um, because, you know, uh, at least in Italy, there's the Sabadini family that has a jewelry company. I don't know if you have any of their pieces, um, but they have a lot of bee symbolism and you see all these amazing bees. Um, I'm really, you know, it, it's really about just the bee 
feeling you get when you look at the animal? Like, are mm-hmm. you, does your heart jump? Does your mm-hmm. skin shiver? Like, is there some sort of reaction that you're having with the spirit animal? <laughs> Rich is um, pointing out that bees were a symbol of royalty. Yeah, and actually, could we, could we go to this one, please? Do we have this one? The swing dress? Yeah, of course we do. And our Lucky Charms print. Doesn't it remind okay, you? Of so I am crazy about the Lucky Charms print. I think it is awesome in the swing dress. So and have, um, here you have an example of how we do different, um, we do the same print in different materials. So here you have a San Gallo embroidery. And then you have a silk twill. Oh, cool. And these are both made in Lake Como. Sheep to a sheep. And um, yeah, so it's just a different thing. Like this is, both of these can be very casual dresses. Like Mm -hmm. this dress I wear sometimes with like trainers Mm -hmm. and same with this one. And then other times with jewelry and Mm -hmm. with a lip, then suddenly you're ready for a big night out. An important night out. So I'm you paired not, that. I'm not a fan of using high heels to elevate me into a more fancy environment. Mm-hmm. I'm way more. Uh, I have way more tendency to add an earring mm-hmm. and red lip, or necklace and red lip, and then I feel like I'm I'm like dressy. Well, what I love is you chose this ring from Moon of the Gem Palace. And what that. they've done here that I think is really fun is to take turquoise and mix it with diamonds. So you have kind of a festive high-low, you have happy color. This you can, you know, dress up or down. Well, I would honestly wear that with my like Stan Smith tennis shoes. And totally. That- totally. And they want you to. So this one's a a great fit. And remember that turquoise is such a potent stone. Mm -hmm. It is like, I mean, if you see any shamans or any Native American healers, et cetera, they are, they're just dripping in it. They're always using it. It brings such good energy. And, um, and obviously the diamond, what's better than a diamond? Um, I love that. And actually getting to good energy. We have a super cool story about the choice you made for the butterfly dress. So can we show the butterfly dress, please? Of course. Love. So this is the print we designed ourselves. And that's, again, our our swing shape. Super easy. On the back, you've got another. So it's a very original design. Each corner of the dress is you know, sort of curated. Mm -hmm. So the earrings that you chose are aquamarine and diamond. And what's interesting about the house that you chose, it's relatively new from India, although they are very, very long-term suppliers to actually Italian high jewelry. Oh yeah. Um, So I'm holding up one of them. And the name of the brand is Talene. And the reason why I wanted to bring up their name in particular is that Talene in Sanskrit means to become passionately absorbed by something almost to distraction. And I had a feeling you would be into that. Um, So Akshat Kia started this company um, in part because he was working on um, green energy and recycling and wanted to really sort of think through how do we do this in a responsible way so the company is Talene, and you can find them in the drop down under houses but could you talk about how you picked this one for the butterfly dress well i mean first of all again it's more just like those earrings the way they're designed the shape Mm -hmm. the energy coming from did you say they're aquamarines yeah they're, that's spectacular. You can just really yeah. feel that crystalline mm-hmm. sensation. I, I'm just nuts about that. And, you know, look, you could wear that butterfly dress again with, like, flip-flops and, like, going mm-hmm. down to, like, a beach lunch. But this one is just so fun. This is a perfect example of how the dress gets transformed by an important earring. You wear your lipstick and not much else, and you're good to go. Mm-hmm. So this is just an example of like how to elevate it in 
in a, you know, I like kind of chandelier style earrings. I'm not, I'm, you wouldn't find me with like a, you know, a st- I like things that drop a little bit. I just find it more elegant and more feminine. And um, the design of these earrings is just beautiful. Agree. JJ, this is our next one. And okay. you, this is the Cartier Panther earring from the 70s, which has emerald eyes and onyx nose and gold beads and diamonds. She fits your exact description of, you know, fun and fringy. Now, you had a question about the animal jewelry, which is, if you choose a piece of animal jewelry, when could you carry the animal motif all the way through, or do you need to stick neutral, like all black, all navy? No, I mean, look, you could totally, I wear my turquoise bee necklace with the turquoise like my the bees are made of gold metal they have turquoise bellies and then like these little like crystal belts on them mm-hmm. they're like little charms okay i would love to wear that mm-hmm. with a print i love okay. that or to wear it with another color that contrasts with it like a coral or orange or something really fun where it pops out it's just that these, if these tigers did not have the chains, mm-hmm. then I could see those working with a print. Okay. Okay. So, so it's the chain just, that affects it's it. It's the chain that is making it busy and is kind mm-hmm. of adding a pattern to the jewel. So. You could wear it with a pattern, but I just think it's she- it's so much cheaper to wear this with a solid. And I Love. think it pops off the black in such an amazing way. Yep, amazing. It really does pop. Fab. And so, again, this is, um, in the image, it's the Lulu shirt and the good butt shorts. I didn't want to miss saying that word. Oh, yeah. And this and is the so- Cartier Panthère. Um, oh, earring with the emerald eyes and the gold fringe beads. Again, everything is in the link in bio. Um, yeah, so we, and uh, I don't know why, I guess those were on a shoot too. So we showed you the good witch dress because we have good witches. And oh, bad yeah. Witches. You do have such good witch dresses. Let's do it. Do you have a good witch with you? We I didn't mean, plan it, but we should throw one in. Well, I'll, yeah. I'll update it on the website for people. Okay, cool. Um, Okay, Okay. so that brings us in the last 13 minutes to a bunch of questions that you have. So Akshat, who actually designed the Talin earrings that you chose, asked the following. um, What do you, what new young designers do you find the most promising? And what about a new piece of jewelry gets you excited enough to want to add it to your collection? So I'll show you. So I love young designers. I just love yep. people that are doing things that are, you know, not for mass market. I love things mm-hmm. that are just really original. So I'll show you a bit like the most recent piece of jewelry that I bought, sorry, oh, I'm going into my jewelry thing is these earrings, which I find super, super modern. Mm-hmm. I like big earrings you know like i i'm a big earring girl let me show you these are called the flintstones for a very specific reason oh lovely these are incredible when you wear them i'll show you um they're these are so gorgeous oh i love that you're getting a bunch of hearts by the way so that's awesome this for me is so original and then you see Mm -hmm. all the stones in there this is so cool but you know i am wearing a lot of you know i keep my best jewelry on the wall as you saw Mm -hmm. and then i wear you know like my my special energetic things gorge elaborate yeah nice yeah i'm wearing elaborate right here my my team because I find these turquoises and they, uh-huh. they they make me these things and I do layers of turquoise. Super fun. I love that. Yeah, and, and I'm doing it like literally with like tons of stuff. And, and you know, I don't know. I also love bells. Mm-hmm. I love like, I love 
jewelry that makes sound, like mm-hmm. wind chimes. You Anything hear it? like that. Yeah. Yeah, I love that love. answer. So question is, um, how do you use your intuition to drive the success of your company? So if you've just joined us, I want to remind you that JJ was an editor and journalist, and she started this company and is the creative director. So how do you use your intuition to drive the success of your company? I have used my intuition the entire time. This is not a head operation. This is definitely a stomach and heart program. Mm -hmm. And what helps me is my spiritual practice. So I am a, I'm a dedicated, I don't know what you want to call it, spiritual ascender, uh, energy healer and teacher. Um, I, you know, I, I, I do chakra clearing meditations for friends. I, mm-hmm. I hold a feminine resonance moment every, at 3.33 every day in the afternoon. This is my altar at home, which is filled with stones there. You see the stones? Mm-hmm. Oh, so cool. Yeah, I mean, I I use a lot of. Um, I find that the the most comes out of me when I'm not operating from this mm-hmm. part. You're feeling it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You were actually asked, JJ, could you please share your preferred techniques for your third eye chakra? You I gotta know. rub that. It's you like an hour in and of girl. itself. Oh my God, you got to rub that. Okay, so the, if your third is blocked, you got to go to the heart. Mm. So a lot of the, you know, a lot of people are kind of keeping things from here up and they yeah. might have a connection just because they're naturally like that, but you're not going to make your true connection unless this is unlocked and unblocked. Mm-hmm. And that just comes from practicing love, practicing gratitude, practicing patience when you want to start screaming. Um, It's really about self-love. Like, that's Mm -hmm. where it all comes from. So, but Um, I really, I really love, like, just rubbing this girl. Rubbing it. Remind yourself it's there. Big time. Tap. Tap, 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 tap. Tap Tap the top Um, of your head. Oh, yeah. I love this This one. This is your crown chakra. You gotta Mm -hmm. gotta wake this thing up. And the other thing that really helps is very deep pranayama. Mm. So the breathing exercises. Yeah. Um, JJ, you were asked, what books do you recommend for people who want to begin on the path to spirituality? Well, I am writing one. So one day you'll have to to read mine. Oh, Um, that's awesome. Gosh, so many books. I think one of the, like, some of the people that have helped me the most are really the Buddhists. Just, like, not because I am a Buddhist, but just their philosophy helped me mm-hmm. loosen up and be more open to a lot mm-hmm. of what I was doing. So some of my favorites have been Chongyang Trungpa Rinpoche mm-hmm. and Pema Chodron because mm-hmm. they really deal with the, the complexities that we have about mm-hmm. our emotions and how that blocks us spiritually and mm-hmm. clogs our energetic system. So I feel like that's a great place to start. So is Caroline Meese, M-Y-S-S. Mm-hmm. Um, she's an amazing teacher. Start following people on Instagram or on YouTube. You know, Abraham Hicks is like an incredible, like this is channel. She's channeling mm-hmm. stuff. It's great. So mm-hmm. cool. Um, I, I mean, here's my, my spiritual library here. Oh, I've, got, wow. I, I've got so many books. Uh, oh, I love that. I know you are a voracious reader, and JJ is always putting up lots of good information and meditations on the La Double J Instagram as well. So I would recommend if you're not already following, please follow. Um, you were also asked, because you do a lot of lifestyle travel on the site. I know you've just come back from some pretty cool collaborations. Um, you were asked, luxury villa or luxury apartment? Which do you prefer? Villa? What are you talking about? <laughs> oh, my God. Look, one, and of the then, most, um, one of the most important things to me is nature. You know, hmm. I, I, I need to have trees, plants, flowers. And it doesn't even need to be luxurious. Right. And 
also it's a connection with family as well, right? You're there together. I love that. So um, I do want to point out again that you've been a huge supporter and collaborator with heritage Italian businesses like Montero, which is the last, I believe, fully Italian owned silk manufacturer in Como. So could you talk a little bit about how you choose your collaborators and what it's been like during COVID? So everyone in Italy has suffered so mm -hmm. much, um, just, you know, obviously mentally, emotionally, physically, but, you know, financially. So many have suffered from orders being canceled, things being shut down. And already Italy was kind of in a precarious situation just because there's so much competition from uh, India and from yeah. China. Oh, and uh, all, India does some great beading work mm -hmm. and, you know, has some real high craft. But a lot of what's made in Asia is not really of that same caliber. And it's so sad to me that a lot of high-end fashion companies are outsourcing things just to kind of make better margins, make more money. Mm -hmm. And Italy has been my home for the last 19 years. And so it, it was almost like my way of giving back to the mm -hmm. country to say, hey, there's so many of these deserving, amazing Italians that actually nobody knows about. And mm -hmm. Mantero is utilized by hundreds of luxury companies, but nobody talks about them. So when mm -hmm. we started working with them, we were the first ones to put their name and our label to write right. about their story. And that's now what we do with Salviati for mm -hmm. the um, Murano glasses. We do that with Mashoni for our bed linens. We do it with ANCAP, who's based in Verona, and is making mm -hmm. our porcelain plates, our vases, a lot of these things. So I am always just looking for excellence. I'm looking for people that can deliver on time. And I love it when they have an amazing archive to play with. Yeah. So recently, we just partnered with Valextra and Aqua di Parma mm -hmm. as well, which are well-known brands. But that was really fun for me to go and work with their archives. That's awesome. So in our final minutes, I just want to remind everyone that everything we paired today is available in the link in bio. Please, please, please keep in mind that La Double J works directly with these heritage brands. There's no additional margin. It's direct to consumer. It's a really good opportunity to support a company that's doing good things. And um, if you want to see more of JJ, she is on La Double J. You've been asked to hook them up with Montero. I will say Montero has one of the most impressive archives I've ever seen. And my students at MIT years ago did their projects for their MBA with me at Montero. And I love them also. So I was thrilled to see that collaboration. They're if you amazing. like the content, they're amazing. If you like the content you're seeing, please follow us at Beekman New York. We do IG Lives with brilliant people like JJ Martin every week. And um, if you have any questions, please DM us, DM La Double J. You can order everything through the link in bio. It'll take you right to the clothing, right to the site. And I can't thank you enough, JJ. This was so fascinating. I learned so much. I'm sure, you know, from the comments, everybody else did too. And well, um, I just want to thank you, Sharon. And by the way, we didn't comment on your excellent jewelry pairing with your Double J printed dress. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm wearing a vintage Bulgari coin necklace. This is Alexander the Great, and this is roughly the 80s, although they started with the coin necklaces in the 60s. We have a wide range, but unlike you, because I'm a shrimp, this one is basically a choker, but it's not a choker on me. <laughs> so it's all, you know, kind of what feels good for you. And um, thank you, thank you. This was it's joy. My my have pleasure. the best day. Really appreciate it. Good evening. Thank you for everyone for coming. And oh, yes. Thank you, awesome. everyone. Ciao. Thank you. Bye. Good night.